I bet you're glad I'm speaking about hunger after lunch. <laughs> Look, there are a few basic things you need to know about hunger in America. It's vast, it's morally reprehensible, and it's a drain on our entire economy. We know exactly how to solve it, but we're doing precisely the opposite. Even though the US is the wealthiest and most agriculturally abundant country in world history, one in six Americans and one in five US children live in food insecure homes, unable to afford enough food. What does that mean in human terms? It means that New York busboy, Jose Gutierrez, who supports his wife and two children on $250 per week, can't always afford groceries. An elderly cancer patient in rural Kentucky chooses between food and medicine. Someone waits until you leave your seat at a Starbucks in Silicon Valley so they can eat crumbs off your plate. An Ohio family buys only the cheap, unhealthy food they can afford and simultaneously battles obesity and hunger. And it means a child in the Bronx going through a dumpster to get breakfast. Because hungry workers can't work, hungry seniors can't stay independent, and hungry children can't learn, hunger costs our economy $167 billion a year. There's no way we can fix public education in America unless we first end child hunger. <laughs> to be schooled, you must be fueled. To be well-read, you must be well-fed. In fact, every major national goal, cutting obesity, Restoring the middle class, cutting crime and incarceration, reducing health care spending, protecting the country from our enemies, and slashing poverty. To accomplish any of those things, we must first end hunger. We know exactly how to end US hunger because we almost did it once. In the 60s, a team of doctors found pockets of third world style malnutrition in low income communities nationwide. In response, bipartisan coalitions in Congress created the modern nutrition safety net, including the food stamp, WIC, and school breakfast programs. These federal efforts worked amazingly. In 1979, doctors went back to the very same places and found a massive reduction in hunger and concluded that the government programs, quote, made the difference. We almost ended US hunger entirely in the 1970s. So what went wrong? Well, we replaced high wages and adequate safety net with bucket brigades. Let me explain. Before the 1900s, US cities fought fires with volunteer bucket brigades. Someone would yell, fire! And volunteers would line up to carry water from the town well to the blaze. One bucket at a time, one bucket at a time, one bucket at a time. The bucket brigades made us feel great. You didn't need a big government bureaucracy. They were the best of America. But there was one weensy, teensy little problem with the bucket brigades. They did not work. City after city, New York, Chicago, Seattle, San Francisco, all burnt to a crisp by major fires. I've calculated that a bucket brigade, at most, could deliver 60 gallons of water per minute. And that's if the water didn't run out and if all the volunteers showed up. <laughs> which they don't always do at 3 a.m. in February. But in modern times, entire US cities don't burn down anymore. Why not? Because government, yes, supposedly evil government, solved the problem. Modern fire trucks, usually purchased by government, supply 1,000 gallons of water per minute. And professional, government-funded firefighters are to paid to be on call 24 hours per day 365 days a year. So let me ask you this. If you're on the third floor of your house and it's on fire, you're there with all your prized possessions. Your cat, your family photos, your TEDx Manhattan booklet, uh, a copy of my book that you're going to run out right after this and buy. Which would you prefer? A volunteer bucket brigade, which may or may not show up, which even in the best of circumstances delivers 60 gallons of water a minute, and can't get water to the second floor, no less the third, or would you prefer a professional fire department 
paid by our tax dollars to always be on call and show up every time they are needed with modern equipment that delivers 1,000 gallons of water per minute and can get to the third floor and can get to even the 100th floor if needed. Now, raise your hands if you'd prefer the bucket brigade. Anyone? I thought so. <laughs> Not one. I've given versions of this talk hundreds of times across America, including in some of the most conservative, Tea Party-fueled states in the Union. And not once, not once, when it came to the safety of their own families and homes, did even the most government-hating audience members say they preferred volunteers. If when it comes to our own family safety and well-being, we pick guaranteed government help, why in the world, when it comes to something as critical as feeding 49 million Americans who are hungry, do we say that volunteer part-time charity is somehow good enough? Food drives are the bucket brigades of today. One can at a time, one can at a time, one can at a time. And just as the bucket brigades didn't end fires, food drives aren't ending hunger. Every year, more and more Americans are going to soup kitchens and food pantries, and every year, more and more Americans are going hungry. Besides, if your own grandmother couldn't afford prescription medicine, you never ask your neighbors to hold a prescription drug drive mm -hmm. and go into their medicine cabinet to donate old drugs? Of course not. Well, if you think about it, food drives are essentially the same thing. People donating food to total strangers having no clue as to the medical, nutritional, or cultural needs of the family getting help. Now, I want to be crystal clear that I honor and appreciate all Americans who donate food. And every bit does help. But I must be equally clear that charity is not the answer. Starting in the Reagan era, US jobs were eliminated and outsourced. Wages were slashed. Unions were crushed. Safety nets were eviscerated. America was sold on the myth that uncoordinated, underfunded, antiquated charities could somehow solve hunger and poverty. As a result, just a few years after we almost ended hunger, the US faced a growing hunger epidemic. Today, government makes it very difficult for families to obtain benefits such as SNAP, the new name for food stamps, WIC, school breakfast, and summer meals. Large numbers of Americans who need government help don't get it. But even given the vast underutilization of the safety net, those government programs still provide 20 times, 20 times the value of food as does every food bank, soup kitchen, food pantry, and food rescue group in America combined. And cuts in SNAP recently enacted by the President and Congress equal about three years' worth of food distributed by all the nation's charities. That means the cuts in Congress that were signed off, unfortunately, by this president basically meant that all the work of every soup kitchen, food pantry, and food bank, and food rescue group in America essentially didn't matter for three years. Claiming we can end hunger with a bit more charity is like saying we can fill the Grand Canyon with a teaspoon. But the Grand Canyon would always erode faster than we can fill it, and hunger will always increase faster than charity. And let's not kid ourselves, we're not going to end hungrier either with more seasonal community gardens or farms, more cooking nutrition classes, or some sexy new app. Sorry, it's true. Sure, some of those things can help at the margins. But let's be clear, the only thing that can truly end hunger in America is a fundamental paradigm shift that replaces charity with justice. We must act with our heads as well as our hearts. That's why we've launched a nationwide Ending Hunger Through Citizen Service initiative to enable Americans of all ages and backgrounds to volunteer more strategically. We've provided concrete ways that people can use their skills as designers, lawyers, coders, writers, accountants, community activists, strategic planners, fundraisers, and videographers to make an even bigger difference in the fight. But the most important thing we all need to do is change public policies to create jobs, raise wages, and boost the food safety net. As I said, hunger costs our economy $167 billion per year. And yet, we can eradicate it if we increase the annual food purchasing power of low-income people by $32 billion a year. Now, if you can end a problem that costs you $167 billion 
for $32 billion. That, that's a no-brainer. Now, you may think that you have no power to get your elected officials to do this. That's not true. As the civil rights, women's, and marriage equity movements have proven, nothing is more powerful than people power. Now, some people always ask me, well, how can we end hunger? Yeah, let's hear it for people power. <laughs> some people always ask me, well, well, Joel, how can we end hunger without influencing public policy? Honestly, that's like asking me how we can end drought without water. You can't. You may think it's just too hard for you to influence elected officials. Well, that's not true either. Hard is landing at a Normandy beach under ferocious machine gun and mortar fire. Hard is marching for civil rights over the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma while being viciously clubbed. Hard is looking into your daughter's eyes and telling her she won't eat tonight. Taking five minutes to contact your elected officials, that's easy. Send them a letter or email, phone them, approach them when they're campaigning, speak to them at a community gathering, join your religious or civic group to ask to meet with them. I guarantee that five minutes contacting your elected officials will do more to end hunger in America than would five years of serving soup. <laughs> Mass people's movements in America ended slavery and child labor. We rose up as a nation and sent the message that civilized nations don't tolerate slavery or child labor. Now it's time for us to rise up and say that civilized nations don't tolerate Workers like Jose Gutierrez working full time and still not being able to feed his family. Civilized nations don't make elderly cancer patients choose between food and medicine. Civilized countries don't force children to go through the dumpster to get breakfast. Civilized nations end hunger. Civilized nations ensure that all children, all adults, all seniors have enough nutritious food. Join me today in the movement to end U.S. hunger once and for all and make healthy food a reality for all Americans. Thank you.